So in the last video, we went through this interesting example of a nucleophilic substitution reaction where we started with one enantiomer of a product and we ended up with two. We ended up with retention and inversion, so two different products. And we saw the reaction was first order overall in substrate and it was favored for tertiary was fastest, the faster than secondary, which is much faster than primary. And the big question we had at the end of this video was how do we explain all these results? How do we come up with a mechanism or a proposal for how to understand why this reaction has all of these different properties? And that's what today's video is all about. We're trying to understand the mechanism of this type of substitution reaction. And we're going to call this the SN1 mechanism. And uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail on why it's called the SN1 in a minute. But uh, just wanted to redraw this, this reaction like we had earlier. With, we're taking two chlorobutane with water and we're getting a mixture of retention and inver in inversion of our products. And like I said, it's first order, retention and inversion, and tertiary is faster than secondary, which is faster than primary. So how do we explain these results? How do we explain uh, these three interesting pieces of experimental evidence uh, and come up with a mechanism that, that helps to support and understand why this reaction happens this way. So the best proposal we have for this reaction is we're really just going to call the two-step mechanism. So unlike in the, the SN2 mechanism, this reaction actually occurs in one step, uh, sorry, which can, the SN2 is confusing because the SN2 occurs in one step and the SN1 occurs in two steps. Uh, but that's because the SN2 is the two stands for bimolecular, so there's two molecules involved in the rate determining step, and the SN1 is, is unimolecular, there's one uh, molecule involved in the rate determining step. So let's just see, see what the details of that rate determining step are. And so what happens first is the leaving group, which is our chloride ion, because remember actually we have uh, HCl is formed at the end here. Our leaving group, well, it just leaves. Our leaving group leaves, the chloride leaves as Cl minus, and this gives us, if we just lose Cl, this gives us this species here, which is called a carbocation. A carbocation, remember there's six electrons around a carbocation, so it actually has an empty p orbital has an empty p orbital. And in, in then after this reaction occurs, then we can then have an attack by water onto our carbocation. And then we obtain our product HOH2. Notice I'm not drawing in any stereochemistry here just yet. OH, OH2. And this loses a proton to give us our alcohol. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna talk about the details of the proton loss in a second here. So just focus on exactly what's happening in this mechanism first, then we'll go into those details. But first thing that happens is leaving group leaves. So step one, leaving group leaves. And step two is our nucleophile which is water in this case, a nucleophile attacks. Nucleophile attacks. So it attacks the empty P orbital of our carbocation. We form a new carbon to oxygen bond. And, and then in this case, the oxygen loses a, uh, breaks off a, a hydrogen bond. So this carbocation is very unstable, right? Carbocations tend to be unstable species. Why? Well, they're they don't have a full octet of electrons. They only have six electrons. So between these two steps, uh, notice that they don't happen at the same time. One happens and then the other one happens. Which one of these two steps do you think is going to be faster? The step where we're going from a fairly stable product to an unstable carbocation, or when we're going from an unstable carbocation to a more stable product? Well, this first step is slow. This first step is slow because we're going from fairly stable to fairly unstable. And the second step is fast. So in the rate of this reaction, the rate is gonna be dependent on the rate of the slowest step. 
So the rate determining step, if you will, is, is this first step. This is what we call the rate determining step, the, or the RDS sometimes. And this step is much, much, much faster. So that's why in the rate law for this reaction, water doesn't really come into play at all because it only depends on the rate of how fast this leaving group can leave the, the alkyl chloride. Now this also helps to explain why tertiary is faster than secondary, which is faster than primary. Why is that? Well, because we're going from, we're going to a carbocation intermediate. So this is again called an intermediate. It's not a transition state, it's an intermediate because it's something that we can actually potentially observe in solution and actually people have observed carbocations in solution. And what we know about carbocation stability is carbocations are electron poor and the more groups they have attached to them that can donate electrons to them, the more stable they are. So the stability the stability of carbocations goes in the order tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is far more stable than primary. And this actually helps to explain our rate. So tertiary is going to be a faster reaction because it's going to lead to a more stable, a more substituted carbocation. So just, just draw this out as one example. I won't draw them all out, but just this one. So if we had a tertiary alkyl halide, that would give us a tertiary carbocation, which would be considerably more stable than the case where it was a secondary carbocation and a secondary, uh, uh, from a secondary alkyl chloride, and a lot more stable than it would be from a primary uh, carbocation. So that helps to explain the rate of tertiary being faster than secondary, which is faster than primary. Okay, so we understand why the reaction is first order because it's the rate trimming step is a slow step here. Hopefully we understand why this reaction is favored for tertiary is faster than secondary, which is faster than primary because we're leading, we're giving a more stable carbocation. Now this last part, the retention and inversion, this, this is the last part we're gonna discuss here. And, and this is interesting. So let's just uh, make some space here uh, just to, clear out some room. So we're going to draw out this carbocation in a slightly different way. So what we're going to do is draw out our carbocation in a slightly different way like this. Try and draw it out in three dimensions. So this is our carbocation. And if you remember, a carbocation is sp two hybridized, so that central carbon is sp2 hydro hybridized, and it's what we call trigonal planar, trigonal planar. And it has an empty p orbital that is not hybridized, so an unhybridized p orbital. So it's flat, it's flat like a coin, okay? And just like a coin, when you flip a coin, you have a 50-50 chance of getting heads or tails. Well, when your water molecule attacks, there is a 50-50 chance of it going from the, in this case, from the, top, from the top or from the bottom. So let's draw out each of these cases. So let's say this is called bottom, okay? So the bottom attack, that would give us one, two, three, so it's going to come from the front. This is going to make H into a wedge if we look at it from the top direction. So the H will be a wedge, and then we'll have our OH2 as a dash. We have one lone pair on our oxygen now. So uh, going from owning to sharing, so that it's going to actually go become positive. Okay. Now if we attacked from the top face, so from the top face, that would give us, um, so that's, that's bottom attack and this is top attack. So if we attack from the top, we would get our OH would be a wedge, okay? So OH2, lone pair, 
positive charge, and we have a dashed hydrogen. Okay, so notice this configuration here. So we started off with this being S. Uh, if it attacks from the top in our example, uh, this is also S, so this is our retention. And if it attacks from the bottom in our example, this would go with inversion. So this is how we get two different uh, isomers from our essence, from this process uh, going through this carbocation because it has a 50-50 chance of going from the top or from the bottom. So we have a mixture of retention and inversion. And then in the next step, what happens is, and this is not actually important for the substitution reaction itself, but just for how do we get to the alcohol, um, you can show, remember that the chloride ion is still present so sometimes it's shown that the chloride ion comes in and removes a pair of electrons, or sorry, removes the H from the oxygen that gives you your free alcohol. Uh, in some circles, it is a little bit more correct to show water coming in as the base and taking a proton away because water is actually a stronger base than chloride ion is. But regardless, uh, regardless of what you choose to use as your base, uh, you're going to remove a proton from your OH2+, plus. this is going to turn it into uh, OH, the neutral version, so the alcohol, with two lone pairs instead of one. Okay, so that's how we go from uh, one enantiomer here to a mixture of retention and inversion. So that's how the stereochemistry works because it's a flat carbocation and it can attack from the top or from the bottom. So this mechanism is referred to as the SN1 mechanism. So this is called substitution, and it's a specifically a nucleophilic substitution because there's other types of substitution reactions uh, that you'll learn about later, but this is nucleophilic substitution, and it's unimolecular. It's unimolecular and that the rate determining step down here, this rate determining step, is unimolecular because it's a slow step to lose the chloride ion. And so that's the SN1 mechanism. That's the other important type of uh, nucleophilic substitution mechanism that, that you'll encounter, especially in your first semester of organic chemistry. And in subsequent videos, we'll go and talk about a little bit more how to compare the SN1 and SN2 and how to determine whether a reaction is going to go through SN1 or SN2 based on the substrate and the type of nucleophile you're using, as well as a few other factors.